What might music sound like in outer space? Could you form a band on another planet? And would the experience of listening to music be any different on another world to how it is here on Earth? I'm Nick, and today that's exactly what I'd like to try and find out with you. Speaking as a musician, space has inspired me in many different ways. I used to play in a band named after Jupiter, but just in general, I find myself inspired by how vast the cosmos is. So why don't you and I go on a journey together now and do an experiment of our own? What might music sound like on another world? All right, here we are at Temple Meads train station and we're about to catch a train to Bath, to go to Bath University to speak with Dr. Philippe Blondel, a physicist there who might be able to tell us a thing or two about what sound therefore music might be like on other planets. Well, the idea of sound, let alone music, being different on another planet really does blow your mind. And if you think about it, if, for instance, on Earth we hear some kind of loud bang, we know that that could be really dangerous and we're going to know not to go near whatever it was that caused that. On another planet like Mars, for example, the loud bang is going to be completely different and possibly it could be louder, it could be quieter, but that's definitely going to have an effect on our, you know, our survival system. How sound propagates in other environments depends on everything. The sound you make, so how it moves from you to me, and how it's attenuated along the way. I'm Philippe, I'm a physicist. I work with underwater sounds, and I've uh, worked uh, a lot on uh, planetary imaging and things on other planets or in space. Going back to basics, what would you say sound is? Speaking like a physicist, sound is a pressure wave. So what it means is that we have a particular environment, let's say air or water. It's made of uh, molecules. We can think of them as small spheres, small marbles. And uh, when we create a pressure wave, we push them. And so what is the Martian air, what will the Martian atmosphere do to our sounds, to our music? The Martian air has a different chemical composition, so the molecules of the marbles for which the pressure wave are going to travel are going to be different, they're going to be smaller or bigger, they're going to be packed differently, so the way the wave moves is going to be different. Am I right in assuming that therefore we're going to hear sound differently there? Yes, uh, but uh, how different it is is going to depend on the frequencies that we use. So whether we use a low pitch, a high pitch, a loud sound or not such a loud sound. Uh, lower sounds, for example the drums, would be audible but muted. The violin or the trumpet would be more muted, so you wouldn't hear them as well, or you would have to play much louder so that they have the same level, the same balance. Would the uh, overall pitch and key of the music be affected in any way? Or uh, if there was a piece, for example, that was in C major, would it still be in crisp C major on Mars? Just the tone itself would be attenuated, but it would still be in C major. But uh, uh, the harmonics, so if you play a chord, that would be different between, because the two frequencies, or the several frequencies that make up the chord, wouldn't sound exactly the same, so that would be very different. In sum then, the three key differences that I need to think about when I'm making my Martian hit uh, are that first of all, the volume is going to be lower, the high frequencies are going to be attenuated or they're going to be taken away from the sound slightly. So uh, higher instruments or frequent or instruments playing in higher registers, their sounds are going to be more difficult to, to hear because of this. Uh, and then again, you mentioned the tone. So for instance, if we go back to our key of C major, chords would sound different depending on what registers they're played in. When it comes to music that is otherworldly, 
What are your hopes? What are your fears? And do you have any thoughts, either from a physics or even from a creative and listening point of view for music on other planets? What I would hope, both from a physical point of view, but from a human point of view as well, is listen to the symphony of sounds on other planets or other planetary bodies. Can we hear the creaking of the ice? Can we hear the sound of waterfalls or oceans on Titan? Can we hear the uh, movement of the wind in the Martian Canyon? Music is just the creation of sound waves. From a human point of view, music is what makes us human. That's what, uh, what that's the soundtrack to our lives, to use a cliché. I feel like I've now acquired the knowledge I need, the ingredients, if you will, for making this uh, Martian hit. Uh, it was very simple. There are only a few things that I really need to think about fundamentally, so I don't have to go around the houses or beat around the bush. It's just lower volume, less high frequencies, and slight differences in some tones, depending on what octave you're in. And what's more is that he actually sent us a scientific paper that will instruct you how to change the sound in order to make it sound like it's on Mars. So I think I now have all, my, all I need to uh, create a Martian soundtrack. Well, I am now in the studio making some preparations and doing some final system checks before we take off. This is now the end of part one though, and that is all we have time for. So I'd like to thank Dr. Blondell for giving up his time to speak to us, to tell us what we need to know to make this Martian music, which is what we're going to do in part two. So stay tuned. <laughs>